So if someone wants you to change the channel, kids, just say no. It was an early Saturday morning, and the orange glow of the peaking sun flashed streaks of light throughout my Garfield-themed bedroom. I sprung from my Garfield-sheeted bed, complete with the wooden-carved Garfield and Friends backboard, and raced to the kitchen to prepare my daily offering. Fifteen traditional Italian stone ovens greeted me as I ran to the fridge to create lasagna feast fit for a king. My high-paying job allowed me to sacrifice my would-be comfortable life to one that serves my orange god and all of his desires. Outfitting my home with the most luxurious kitchenware was obviously a must. Hours went by as I crafted a magnificent array of crisp, golden treats, and I was starting to squirm with anticipation for what was to come. The cooking was done, and now the final preparations needed to be set. I laid out forty freshly killed gray cats in a perfect circle. Each deceased cat had name tags stapled to their foreheads that read, Nermal faggot. After carefully placing the lasagna in the center of the flesh circle, my work was complete. I sat cross-legged, embraced my handcraft Garfield plushie made from my shaved body hair, and prayed for the orange cat's arrival. After an hour of waiting, a blinding flash of white and orange light erupted from the center of my room. The shockwave from the blast sent pieces of my sacrifice flying throughout, but their descent stopped mid-air as a dark, plump figure slowly emerged from the light. It was him, my god, my savior. It was Garfield. I immediately removed my custom-made Garfield and Friends prayer robes and eagerly presented my freshly bleached asshole. I heard a soft but hearty chuckle from behind that could only be described as velvety vocal gold. <sighs> I thought I might mix things up a bit today and try something a little different, Garfield casually mentioned as he picked me up from the ground to face him. My eyes immediately locked to the floor as I dare not make eye contact with such a supreme being. He chuckled again, making me slightly whimper with ecstasy. Do not be afraid to look into my gaze, sweet, innocent child. Garfield gently puts his hand to my chin and lifts my head. I was met with the most beautiful pair of eyes I had ever seen. The whites of Garfield's eyes softly glowed in the dark room, and his black pupils gave off a sense of warmth and fatherly love. As we looked into one another's eyes for what felt like centuries, I felt a strong warmth pushing against my stomach. I glanced down and my eyes widened. There it was, Garfield's fat, juicy cock. I looked up to see Garfield smirking. I don't want to be inside you, but not in the normal fashion. I was puzzled by what he meant, but before I could ask any questions, Garfield was reaching for my unerect cock while lubing his meaty orange member with lasagna sauce. He drew my penis close to his and he began to separate my urethra apart like a budding flower. I screamed in agony. The pain was unimaginable but I had to please my king. Garfield bumped his girthy bazooka up against my now foot-wide urethra. Hmm, this is going to be a tight fit, but I think we'll manage. Garfield mumbled as he pushed himself deep inside my forbidden hole. The pain of a thousand needles brushing up against the inside of the walls of my urethra sent me into a complete shock. I could no longer stand on my own, 
but the supernatural power of Garfield kept my body from crumbling to the ground. The blood started to dribble out of our newly created ravioli home as Garfield increased the frequency of his pumps. Garfield, it, it hurts so much, I can't. Garfield placed a thick finger over my lips to silence my begging. I know, but you will be the bearer of my brood. This pain will be temporary, but your euphoria will be eternal once I plant my corrupted seed. I wept tears of joy and pain as he wrapped his powerful arms securely around me. I felt a massive twitch inside of me as Garfield thrusts faster than before. A mass of hot gooey cheese shoots deep inside me. I could feel the cum wiggling its way deeper inside me to form the Antichrist. Massive yellow chunks of semen plop to the ground as Garfield removes himself from my destroyed penis. You have always been a loyal follower. So I have chosen you specifically to grow my offspring. I will be back in nine months for the child, my sweet flower. Garfield quickly snaps his fingers, breaking the sound barrier as the same portal from earlier forms in the center of the room. Walking through the portal, Garfield glances back at me, winks with his classic smirk, and slowly fades away into the bright light. A loud snap echoes throughout the room as the portal blinks out of existence. As I lie alone with my fully prolapsed penis, I softly put a hand against my stomach. A grin forms across my face. He chose me to be the mother. Thank you, Garfield.